This is video number three of four in the ERP SIM production process. And this video will take you from raw materials to production. To realize that this is all following the textbook, the ERP SIM SAP Labs and Textbook 3rd Edition, it presumes you have SAP experience. So it might be completing SAP Labs 1 through 3, it might be a manufacturing game or two. These videos, this is video number three of four, it's meant to be watched in order. If you have not watched videos one and two, go back and watch those first. The video itself is more functional in nature. The, the strategy behind this is actually in other videos. So watch for those and realize that I'm using the SAP GUID without any kind of Fiori enhancement. So it's kind of like using the ECP version of SAP ERP. So raw materials to production, this is strategic in nature. And when I have students who tell me things like, we don't know what we're doing wrong. We're not sure why we don't have the profit we want. The first thing that I check is the sales forecast. The second thing I check is how often they're running MRP. And the third thing I look at is their production. I take a look at their production schedule. This is really at the core of a good strategy, of a, a good company running a good manufacturing game. So realize this video is functional in nature. But this is really a strategic decision. The raw materials to production ends up being strategic in nature. So just realize that. So why is it that the production process is strategic? Well, expenses build up within the manufacturing game, just like they do in real life. And the only way to have profit is through revenue, at your actual sales. The revenue comes from production. So having the right products available for your customers at the right time, which means a poor production strategy equals low revenue and, and of course, low profit. So realize uh, in the last video we talked about MRP. MRP is planning two different things. There's procurement, which is the raw materials. So the purchase requisitions are the, the planned orders. The purchase requisitions are converted to purchase orders. And at this point, we have our raw materials. So the other part of MRP, so when we ran that, the other part is the production plan. So we have planned production orders, or the PLID ORD. A PLID ORD is a planned production order, or an internal order to actually create the finished good. Now do realize this is really it's button pushing. So uh, the job aid itself is going to help you walk through it, so don't feel like you need to memorize it. Realize the entire production process is available on the job aid, including some of the game parameters and details. That's all on the job aid. So let's switch over to it. So we are at the point where we have received our raw material. So everything has been delivered. So ZME2N, the purchase order tracking. And what we want to do is jump back up here, the collective conversion of planned orders, the 041. So again, you cannot do this until everything has been delivered. So doing this as part of a process, we put in our sales forecast, we've executed MRP, we converted our purchase requisitions or purchase orders, we've waited for our raw materials. As soon as the raw materials are in, we're going to work on releasing our production. So collective conversion of planned orders. There's CO41, that is the letter O. For one. The very first thing it says is click the execute button. Here are my six products. And if you remember back to my sales forecast, I picked every other product. Go. And I put 37,000 for each one. So these are my planned production orders. So I can select the orders. And there are multiple ways of doing this. I can pick a few of them. My buttons <laughs> looks a little different sorry there we go select all because you funny the last version of this was at the bottom so select all i can deselect all but realize this is strategic in nature so i want to kind of determine what is it that i want first what do i think my my customers might want first because i have no sales data i don't really know so i'm just going to pick randomly these three Click Convert. So that would put those three on the production schedule first, the other three, and then Convert. There we 
go. Not sure what that happened there. Sometimes that happens. You have to run it a couple of times. So I have my collective conversion of planned orders, and then I want to see my production schedule. Z-C-O-O-I-S. Z-O-O-I-S. So right now it is saying that the start time is not scheduled. The finish time is not scheduled. It was released on round one, day three, and my target is 37,000 for each of these, and nothing has been confirmed. What I'm going to do is start the simulation that I'm looking for and refresh. The production line can create 24,000 products, unless it's been upgraded to 24,000 products in a day. So I have already created 24,000 of the 500 gram nut muesli. This is not Day five, I'll click refresh. I have finished this production order and I have eight hours of setup time between the nut muesli and the original muesli. I now have 3,000 confirmed. So it's working its way through the production schedule. Any second now, <laughs> it'll switch to day six. Just realize that it's going to be in this order. Once it's in the, the production schedule, there is nothing you can do to change it. This is actually the order. And that's when I showed you in the sales forecast, clicking enter to make sure that you have the proper format. When I have students who accidentally do things like one and a half million <laughs> for their production order, they uh, once you have it in the production plan, you can't change anything. So just realize that it can't be changed. Fresh here. And I'll have most of my original muesli. Now, I am the only person that part of this simulation here. So I'm going to go over here. So this is my detailed sales order report. And that is something you can see within the cabin. There are the two different sales order reports. The, the summary sales order report, which doesn't say a whole lot. This is the detailed sales order report that I'm looking at. And what it's showing is for my products, and I only have a couple of them now, the Nut Muesli in original. So it's showing the, showing the material code. It's showing that I'm selling it in distribution channel 12 and 14 in the north. Day six of round one. This is what my price is. And pricing is a whole other transaction, changing that. This is the size of the order, and this tells me how much was sold, how much the total value was for it. The cost is kind of like an estimate, so that's not uh, something to really be taken <laughs> seriously. Here we go, day seven, I have a bit more that's come through. Some of the other transactions that might be of interest. Inventory report, you can see that I have finished goods here, and then you can see the raw materials down here. Uh, you can see that the raw materials are all reserved for production orders. If they did not equal the same, that means that I have some raw materials that are not being used. That inventory report is over here, stock levels, inventory report, ZMB52. So at this point, we have worked through the entire collective conversion of planned orders. The, the next video, I will work through that entire production process again, so without stopping, without explanation.